Hey everyone, it's Dan from Tennessee Tuna Garage. Um, it's been a while since I posted anything, so here's an update on what I've been doing on the Prelude. Uh, we're waiting for our pistons and rods to get back from the machine shop. They should get back sometime this week. Um, I accidentally deleted the first clip of this video, but basically I was just explaining in that clip what I'm doing to fill in the two indents on the roof of the vehicle. Most vehicles have a little strip of plastic or metal that runs across the top of the roof from the windshield to the back glass and mine was missing on the passenger side on the prelude so I decided to get some body filler and fill it in make it all pretty and contour with the vehicle that way it's nice and smooth um, I just bought the body filler from Walmart I would recommend if you're gonna do something like this buy the one gallon tub from Walmart it's like 16 or 17 dollars I didn't realize I would need that much so I only bought the one pound canister of it and I used most of it on just the passenger side um, but without further ado, here is what I do still have from the process of doing it. I uh, hope this is informative to you guys. It's really easy to do, really easy to work with. And if you want to fill in some dents or some rust holes that ate through, this is a really good, easy way to do it. So, here you go. Now we're back. All of our... Um, body filler is nice and dry, not really tacky anymore, um, so we're going to go ahead and sand it. Um, this is just a, I believe it's an 80 or 100 grit sanding block, I think it's 100. I got it from Walmart for like 3 bucks, it was on sale. Um, and I, I really like it here on this because it kind of contours to the vehicle. So it keeps the shape that's stock, that nice rounded shape like that. Oh, like that. Keeps that rounded shape on it um, without having to try. Cool, Bobo. Um, so I found that that really helps quite a bit when you're sanding here, or at least on this particular spot. Um, now, obviously, it's not going to work very well on a flat spot, say, like on this sunroof here. It's not going to work well because my hand is going to contour it to the shape of my hand also. But on a rounded spot like this, it's going to work wonders. So, that's what I would recommend. My son was a little upset that I'm using his wagon to store my sanding stuff in. Um, I'm using his little red wagon that his grandparents got him for his and his sister's birthday. Um, that's, that's another thing. If you're working outside on this like I am, have some sort of something to hold your stuff in. It makes it so much easier when you're actually working to not have to hunt for your stuff. Or to not have to run inside just to grab a piece of sandpaper or something. Well, this stuff's actually not wanting to sand very well with this. I used this quite a bit the other day. So I'm going to swap back to that 80 grit right here that I was using earlier and I'm just going to use my hand for it this time um, as you can see I'm holding it like that um, if you have jewelry on keep that part of your finger off or if you have a ring on keep that part of your finger off of the surface you're sanding otherwise it will cause an indent 
Um, you want to just keep uniform pressure between the fingers that you are using to hold it. Otherwise, that will also create an indent, and you don't want an indent on your Bondo. You can add it again easily, but you don't want to create more work for yourself than you have to. But I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding this down and then show you guys what it looks like when I'm done and uh, go from there. All right. Um, I just finished sanding it and I'm about to blow it off with an air hose. Um, I personally like to blow it off to blow, to get rid of all the sand and dust. Oh. I don't know what you guys heard of that. My phone just acted up. Um, but I finished sanding and I'm blowing off all the uh, sanding dust right now. Alright, that's how I personally like to remove the sanding dust. Um, I'm sure there's other ways like a tack cloth or a wet cloth or something. That's just how I do it. Um, and I'm not quite done with sanding because I didn't realize that I still have to get this crap off here. Uh, come on. Try to avoid spilling Bondo on stuff once it's on. It doesn't like to come off. And I recommend wearing some sort of respirator when you're doing a lot of sanding. It gets really hard to breathe without it. Um, and it's not good for your lungs. So, you know. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, usually I do wear a respirator, but when I'm recording a video, it's hard to explain it with the respirator on. It's muffled, so... Anyways, I'm about to spray it off again, and I'll show you what it looks like after that. So this is what our finished product looks like here. Um, there's one itty-bitty dimple right there. Right there. Um, these are not dimples. Those are just some primer there that didn't come up. Um, but I can run my nail across it, and it doesn't get caught there. So it's not a dimple. But this right here is the only dimple I have throughout this entire section. Um, I'm very proud with that. I'm very happy with it. Um, it's nice and smooth. It's got a good contour to it. It goes with the curve of the car. Um, and that took most of that container of Bondo. I have enough to start the other side, but definitely not to finish it. So, if you want to do this, I recommend buying the gallon, like I said earlier. Um... It just saves time in the end, because if you don't buy the gallon, you're going to end up buying two of those, and then you pay the same price for a gallon when you get about half that amount. Now, because I don't have primer <laughs> right now, I'm just going to use this uh, matte black to prevent it from rusting, and we'll see how well it holds up. It may hold up well enough that I don't even need primer here. So... I probably should close my laptop. Don't want any on my screen. Um, I just do a nice even coat, nice and light. And I work my way down. And back up and just keep doing nice itty bitty bursts like this
and that gets it to act more like primer at first which this stuff is actually very textured anyways when it dries so I'm hoping this actually may work for primer um, I am thinking about just spray painting the car right now and then doing an official paint job later down the road just do a rattle can for now I don't know if I will or not but you know it's an option I wish I would have noticed that before I started spraying I got some nice rust there that I gotta fix up so I'm gonna go ahead and sand down that rust and then I'm gonna finish painting it and pick the video up from there all right so I just finished spraying it after I cleaned up that spot you can still see the spot right here in the right angle um, it's still very very wet but this is just a temporary paint to prevent it from rusting um, I painted part of the door jam and I'm actually liking how this flat black looks so I may paint it flat black for a while um, which would go well with my color scheme I'm not sure but um, I'm tossing up between red, blue, and flat black now. But basically, that's all there is to it. You you mix up your Bondo or your body filler, whatever brand it is. You spread it in where you need it. You let it dry. You spread in some more if you need to fill it up some more. If not, you sand it down till it's flat with everything else. And then you primer and spray paint. I skipped primer because I don't have any primer. Um, but I shouldn't have. Because had I done primer, you wouldn't be able to tell that that hole was heavily sanded in. Um, whoever painted it last did not do a good job. There are water bubbles all over here. All that's water bubbles. There's water bubbles right here. Um, so... I'm, I definitely still have a crap ton of work. Um, I'm just going to lightly close that. Yeah, there we go. What I actually bought that paint for was to redo the interior plastics, like the center console, um, because it is crap right now, and I don't know where it is. It's in here somewhere, but it looks like crap. However they did it, they didn't do it well. Um, what they did was they freaking painted it a bunch of different colors and it just looks like crap. We're going to paint that flat black. And I'm thinking about doing a Crown Royal shift boot. I've got a Crown Royal bag in the freezer. Not by itself, obviously, around a Crown Royal. Um, but think about doing a Crown bag. For my shift boot, I think that look nice. Um, I've seen it on a few different things, and it, it looks pretty good. So, that's all for today. Um, thanks for watching. And I'm going to start doing another series here soon about prepping, probably. And I'm not talking about paint. So, for those of you who know what it is, please look forward to it. Um, I don't know when I'll start that, but I'll probably start it here in the near future. So, this is Tennessee Tuner Garage signing out. Thanks for the watches. Please like, share, and get more people watching. Have a good one.